Hey, this is Presh Talwalker. This video covers two problems that involve absolute values. Problem one, solve for all real values of x such that the absolute value of x minus one minus the absolute value of x plus one plus x is less than zero. This is adapted from a tweet by Jairith Chaho. Problem two. If x is a real number, what is the product of all the roots of the equation? The square root of 5 times the absolute value of x plus 8 is equal to the square root of x squared minus 16. This is adapted from a 2011 AMC problem. The AMC 10B is one of the Olympiad qualifying tests in America. Pause the video if you'd like to give these problems a try. And when you're ready, keep watching to learn how to solve these problems. Let's solve problem one. To solve this problem, we will recall the definition of the absolute value of x. The absolute value of x is equal to x if x is greater than or equal to zero, and it's equal to the opposite of x if x is less than zero. So if x is greater than or equal to 0, the graph of y is equal to absolute value of x will be y is equal to x. When x is less than 0, it'll be equal to the opposite of x, so it'll look like this. So we have a v-shaped graph. So to solve this problem, we need to look at what's inside of the absolute value signs. So here, we need to know when x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. This is when x is greater than or equal to 1. We also need to know when x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 0, and that is when x is greater than or equal to negative 1. So now we need to look at both of these together. So imagine we have a number line. Clearly, 1 and negative 1 are critical values. For x minus 1, it will be positive when x is greater than or equal to 1, and otherwise it's going to be negative. For x plus 1, it's going to be positive all the way until x is equal to negative 1, and then it's going to be negative. So we have three different cases to consider. One case, both of these are positive. In another case, one is positive, the other is negative. And in the other case, they're both negative. So let's work through these three different cases. So we'll start out by supposing x is greater than or equal to 1. So both of them are going to be positive in this case. So we have x minus 1 minus the quantity x plus 1 plus x is less than 0. We can simplify this, and we end up with the result that x is less than 2. So we need to combine that with x is greater than or equal to negative 1. So we get 1 is less than or equal to x is less than 2. The next case is when negative 1 is less than or equal to x is less than 1. In that case, this one is going to be negative, and the other one is going to be positive. So we have the opposite of x minus 1 minus the quantity x plus 1 plus x is less than 0. So you just need to be careful about the signs and grouping the terms. When you work it all out, you end up with 0 is less than x. Now we need to combine it with the condition that negative 1 is less than or equal to x is less than 1. So this works out to 0 is less than x is less than 1. Finally, if x is less than negative 1, then both of the terms inside of these absolute values will be less than 0. So we will have the opposite of x minus 1 minus the opposite of x plus 1 plus x is less than 0. Now just carefully work through all of these sign changes and group like terms and you end up with the result that x is less than negative 2. We combine this with x is less than negative 1, and we just end up with x is less than negative 2. So these are the conditions we have. We have x is less than negative 2, or 0 is less than x is less than 1, or 1 is less than or equal to x is less than 2. We can visualize the solution graphically. This is the graph of the function the absolute value of x minus 1 minus the absolute value of x plus 1 plus x. 
we need to see where this graph is less than zero. So here is one interval, x is less than negative two. Here is another interval, zero is less than x is less than one. And then we have one is less than or equal to x is less than two. In fact, we can combine these two conditions together. So we just have zero is less than x is less than two. And that's the solution. x is less than negative two or zero is less than x is less than two. Now let's solve problem two. We have a square root on both sides of the equation, so we will square both sides of the equation. Since we squared both sides, we just want to make sure we don't create any extraneous roots. So we'll be careful to check the answer at the end. So the equation we have is five times the absolute value of x plus eight is equal to x squared minus 16. We could go to the definition of the absolute value of x and approach it by cases. But in this problem, there's another neat way you can solve it. x squared is exactly the same thing as the square of the absolute value of x. So we can substitute that into this equation. We will now subtract five times the absolute value of x and subtract eight from both sides of the equation. So we have zero is equal to the square of the absolute value of x minus five times the absolute value of x minus 24. So if we look at this equation, we actually have a quadratic equation in the term, the absolute value of x. In this case, we can actually factor this equation. 24 has factors of eight and three, which differ by five. So we get one factor is the absolute value of x minus eight, and the other factor is the absolute value of x plus three. So this gives two possibilities. Either the absolute value of x is equal to eight, or the absolute value of x is equal to negative three. But we know the absolute value of x has to be greater than or equal to zero. So it can't possibly be equal to negative three. So we exclude this case. So the only possibility is that the absolute value of x is equal to eight. We now just checked that both solutions, x is equal to negative eight or x is equal to eight, will work in the original equation. And in fact, they do both work. So x is equal to negative eight and x is equal to eight are roots, which means the product of all the roots is negative eight times eight, which equals negative 64. And that's the answer. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.